Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live. And tonight, special guest uh, from formerly, as of last night, the former carver from The Walking Dead, Alex Mraz. Alex, thank you for being here. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm waiting for uh, Carver's Revenge. I'm sure they, you know, the spinoff. You never know. You never know. So there's no nice way to put this. Uh, Carver was a straight up prick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's really no other way to put it, but it looks like you had a blast playing this guy. How did you embrace the character of Carver? Um, I mean, first I'll say is like, the casting of it, um, I was supposed to film, I had booked a, a TV series for Netflix, uh, um, a mini series, and it was going to be filming in Australia. And the COVID restrictions were pretty crazy to where, you know, I'd have to fly out there. And I think it was uh, two weeks in a quarantine hotel. Um, and I couldn't bring my family. And that was a big incentive for yeah. me. I have two kids and, you know, my wife. So, um, I had already got the offer and we were kind of going back and forth. And then the audition for, for the walking dead came in and, you know, a year before this was, this was last year in, uh, actually a year, almost to the day, it was in February when I first got the audition, but a year before that in, in 2020, I had asked my son, who's, he's a teenager, he's 13. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, you know, I have ideas of what I'd like to be doing in my career, but I thought, well, Shit, let me ask him, like, what would you like to see dad in? And man, he didn't even skip a beat. He's like, The Walking Dead. <laughs> I was like, Oh, what? I was like, I've never, and I thought about him, like, I've never even come across an audition for the show. Like, yeah. they've never, you know, there hasn't been a role for me or just for whatever reason, you know, just fate didn't have it happen that way. So I normally, if I have an offer, I don't ever go out on something, you know, but. I thought, well, shit, you know, my son did ask for The Walking Dead. It came in. I'm not really too happy to, about going to Australia, you know, under the circumstances. So I auditioned for a really vague scene. The names were switched around. It was a scene where um, me and um, Leah and Daryl were mm -hmm. like clearing the houses and we have like an argument and then he's hiding. Daryl hides like a carpet where, where uh, Maggie's hiding. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so it was that scene, but they, the names were changed. So I didn't know it was Daryl. It was like, his name was like Ben or some, you know, some weird yeah, name. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I just did the audition, threw it in there. Uh, I mean, it, it was written to be an asshole. <laughs> you know, I didn't invent that. It was supposed to be a post-apocalyptic a-hole, you know? Um, but yeah, we got to, it was a quick turnaround. They came back around with an offer. It was like within a week. Um, and then, you know, and they were so accommodating on the show that, like, yeah, we'll fly him out. And um, he's and they they actually had me and my wife, and my kids. We stayed in the walls of Alexandria. Wow. Yeah. So we were like they would be filming. And all they would ask is if we turn the lights off. So we like turn the lights off and we look we could, like peek outside and we see, you know, walkers running around and zombies everywhere. And that is so cool. Dude, it was it was awesome. And my son, who was the biggest fan of The Walking Dead, he got to meet, you know, um, the cast and got to see some zombies. He got to sit in the director's chair. Um, nice. It was, yeah. It was cool oh, man, experience. I can imagine what kind of treat that was for him. Uh, so uh, you get the part, you get the real names, you see who you're going to be uh, doing. Did you embrace the, the part of the antagonist? Did you add your own little swagger to Carver? Yeah, I um, I was training at a, at a CrossFit gym, right? And there were some fans, big fans of, of the show, and they kept they were really like uh, really terrified of, of Negan's character, you uh -huh. know, Negan. Like, yeah. oh man, that guy's super fucking freaky, man. Like, <laughs> you have scenes with that guy; he's so intense. And, and I was like, oh okay, but I almost took it as a challenge. Well, like, well shit, I'm supposed to be the badass, you know? Mm -hmm. what I mean, it's like I better pick it up, man. There ain't no softy, so. I definitely thought like I have to find ways to just just stand out. And um, up until that point, I had only seen a couple of episodes. So as soon as I, I got to um, to Georgia, I mean, I binge watched from the very first episode to wow. uh, that's a lot to the tenth of season. Yeah, it was it was a it was another time. You know, I had a full time job within filming. And as soon as I come home, my part time job was like watching all the all the shows. So I was 
living and breathing The Walking Dead, you know, within even living on, a, on an active film set, too. So Wow. Now, in yesterday's episode, action-packed episode, you showed off, you know, some amazing moves in that hallway uh, yeah. with uh, Lauren, Maggie, and uh, Negan, and Elijah. Uh how much time did they have you work with a stunt coordinator and how much of that was actually you and how much of it was a stunt double? I mean, Norm was, was pretty funny about it. We had, a, um, Daryl, right. He, we, uh, we had, there was one day they brought me in. Um, first I didn't know there was any martial arts stuff. Mm -hmm. My background is in martial arts. So I did uh, Muay Thai, the Jiu Jitsu, uh, Capoeira. It's like a Brazilian martial art. Did that for like over 15 years. I got a black belt in uh, Shotokan Karate. Nice. And then for like 20 years, I was I was a break dancer. So physically, I was always um, just, you know, just always did martial arts since I was really little. And uh, so I didn't I didn't I didn't think I was going to do any fights because I didn't I didn't know that they had choreography. Yeah, you know, I thought it was you know real simple. You kill zombies, so I mean um, the, those moves, like I said in the hallway that you did, were damn good. Uh, again, was that you the whole time, or did they put in a stunt double? Yeah, so initially I had um, they brought me in my my first day and in, in, uh, for prep it was me and Norman um, and the stunt choreographer in they had like devised like a fight scene when when daryl fights with the reapers the first time at night and then dog gets thrown yeah you know and um so i was my character was introduced in that but i had a mask on so you couldn't even see so i had learned the choreography and i remember norm norm thought i was a stunt guy at first he was like he's like he's like, oh man wow you know and then they're like oh yeah no he's gonna be playing carver he's like oh shit oh man you move like a like a stunt guy i thought you were stunts you know I was like, oh. and um and then he was like, then he he thought about it for a second. He was like, wait, did they, did you know you're going to be doing this? Or, or like, I was like, man, honestly, I had no fucking idea. He's like, dude, <laughs> they, they lucked out on you, man. Like you for real can do it. So, um, no, he actually gave me a really good piece of advice though, which I, I should have took, took on earlier, which, um, he told me, he's like, look, they, they get really excited when they film, you know, action scenes. He's like, they'll do like 40 takes of the same thing. And, and if you get hurt, man, they're going to just keep going anyways. He's like, so just, you know, get your stunt guy to do some of it. You know, don't, don't try to do all of it because he's got like a really bad knee and shoulder injury. You yeah. know, 12 years of doing the show. Exactly. So yeah. He's definitely wore it. So I thought, well, yeah, all right. I thought about it. And then, you know, but I got super excited. I want to do all my own stuff. And then, um, yeah, I got banged up quite a bit. I ended up having a, like, um, it was heat exhaustion, they called it, but it felt like a damn heat stroke. Like I had to go to the, a hospital and put some IV bags in me. And, Jeez. Uh, yeah, it was pretty intense. But yeah, for the fight scene between, uh, you know, Maggie, Negan, and, and, um, and, uh, 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 Elijah. Elijah, yeah. I was thinking his real name, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was on the spot, man. I, I showed up. They had a, a really good, uh, stunt double. He, he was a Frenchman. He was from France. Um, he was doing some awesome stuff, but they had to like, you know, they needed some of my reactions, like tight reactions of my face. Yeah. And uh, so once we started doing it, um, the director was just like, fuck, this guy can't, you know, he can really do it. Let's just let's just do it bit by bit. Let's mm -hmm. just have Alex do the whole choreography. So I ended up like, man, it was on the fly. They threw me in there. My my chore uh, the choreographer and my stunt double were just showing me like, OK, in this section, you know, you're going to have to block. Negan, when he tries to hit you and you grab it, you got to push kick so and so, you know. So, all right, so we had to do it little, little by little. Um, so yeah, when, when you see the that footage, most of that's me, you know. My stunt double's in there a little bit too. He was good though, man. He was damn good. When I saw what he was doing, I'm like, hey, man, he's making me look awesome. So he could go ahead and take it. But did that whole that sequence was... take a, a full day to shoot? Yeah, that was a, um, yeah, actually, yep. That, yeah, that whole, fight yeah, that was a whole film day uh film the whole night uh, and then i remember we ran out of time and i remember they had a rush norm because we also did the scene afterwards where i get knocked out mm -hmm. and then there's a whole bit of dialogue like that thing was like done in two takes and norm got rushed in and, and he's like oh man you know they were like trying to, okay we just need you to say your lines here and yeah he know. stopped them from killing you uh yeah. so there you are you're kicking Lauren's ass, you're you're kicking Elijah, you're kicking Jeffrey's ass. 
Um, now, Norman, he wasn't exactly in the fight. He came in and saved you to use you as sort of yeah. trade bait at the end. Now, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people from the Walking Dead universe, you know, and they all say Norman is, you know, when you meet him in person, he's not that big kind of uh, intimidating guy. He's like mm -hmm. five foot ten. I don't want to insult Norman, but uh, what is he like in, in person when you stand toe to toe with him? Um, yeah, he's fucking look, I came from in my breakdancing, you know, background. We loved him in Boondock Saint. Oh, yeah. And in uh, Blade Two, you know, and and that was actually one of the things that when I first met him, I was like just a super fan. But I had to keep it, you know, under wraps. So yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. hey, what's up? And I did keep it cool, but I'm like, oh fuck. And um, <laughs> but I, it dawned on me my breakdancing name was Nomac. And oh, Nomac yeah. in Blade Two was a Reaper. And then I was like talking to Norm, and I thought, holy shit, dude, like. I, my, you know, I loved Blade 2 and, and I watched that movie so damn much to the point where I even, at one point I copied Norm's hair in it and I like <laughs> textured it a certain way, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, damn, dude, I'm playing a Reaper right now and yeah. I'm with you. And I was like, just the way the universe kind of like- Yeah, you know, it all, the irony is just really phenomenal. So there's this underlying love triangle on not mm -hmm. really spoken between your character, Lynn's character, and Norman, who plays Daryl, of course. Yeah. Uh, let's focus on Carver and Leah. Do you think Carver was in love romantically with Leah, Lynn Collins? I, I was told by Angela Kang that we had like a you know, we had like a, uh, a conference call just kind of update me with where they were going to go with everything. And she kind of let me know backstory stuff with how they had devised it. Mm -hmm. But it was all along was like, it, it's, it's a brother, uh, uh, brother, sister relationship. Like it's, it's nothing, it's nothing sexual. It's okay. Nothing sexual. So, and then, uh, you know, so I never, I actually never even, I didn't even think anything of it. I just, in the, there was one of the directors, I remember we had a scene where we were walking um, it was like a really simple scene and uh, and the, the director was like, man, just the chemistry between you two. <laughs> yeah, I was like, It was what? intense. Yeah, so my mind, I, I was like, I never even, um, you know, which Lynn is beautiful, very spiritually open and aware. And we connected on like other things outside of just acting. So yeah. I think maybe the, that chemistry that that kind of showed through, you know, mm -hmm. that connection. And it worked. Um, it worked for the yeah. show. It definitely worked. Now, yeah. there's the animosity between your character, Carver, and Daryl. You guys, you don't like him. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not a secret. You don't like him. Um, do you think there was ever a moment after Leah was trying to convince Carver that, no, I vouch for him, he's one of us? Do you think Carver ever really bought it, or he always thought in the back of his mind this guy is not with us. He's not one of us. He's going to screw us over in the first chance he gets. Yeah, I think, I, I feel like as much as I was an a-hole, I was right. Yeah. You know, it's like I fucking, I and was you right said so as well. That's right. Yeah. yeah it's like, you should have killed him off. It's like, should have fucking, like, and I knew it. So I feel like the way I chose to play it, but it was written really well. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just played what was written, but my intention with it was you know don't give this guy an inch you know even if i'm being nice and i'm like playful i'm still talking shit. you know it is yeah. i'm not gonna and also you gotta remember these guys were supposed to be like uh special forces guys too military guys yeah, mercenaries. i think it was like a part of like a little bit of hazing too there but um yeah i feel like until proven otherwise i'm not gonna trust this guy you know yeah. and, and so i kept it really just really simple i mean there was some some writing i felt like was like meant to be a little more playful but i i just made it more matter of fact you know which... did, did you and norman have any discussions on how you guys are going to work your scenes together uh no that's actually why I, I really liked working with norm as an actor is that he's so fucking uh, i don't know if i can curse on this thing oh, but... yeah, yeah. this is the yeah uh, absolutely <clears throat> he's so um He's so grounded as a person and so laid back and really just welcoming, you know, like there's nothing, 
you know, I worked with other actors sometimes and they take up a lot of oxygen, you know, where you're just like, yeah. oh, I gotta, you know, gotta give this guy his space. And man, he was so laid back. And, you know, I, by the time I got there, it was their what, 11th, almost 12th year filming. So, um, and he was still really passionate about the work. That's what me and uh, Richie Co- Coster, you, you know, plays, plays Pope. Pope. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, fuck, man. Like, you know, we, we, we were joking around between ourselves. Me and, me and Richie were like, we work four days in a row and we feel like we're the hardest working actors in showbiz, you know? <laughs> it's like you got this guy here for like over a decade working and he's like, still cares. You know, he was always trying to figure out how they could make the scene better. Um, and, and that was really, that's really infectious. You know, when you're in yeah. a scene, you're like, oh, cool, man. Like, it so makes you not. bring your game up a level as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, he was, he was so, cool about it. So mm-hmm. when you, uh, got the role was there any nerves because this is a mega hit show it's been running for well over a decade or did you have any butterflies any nerves the day before you walked onto that set uh no no i didn't i actually didn't i i felt like tv has always felt like a different like a safer uh medium Mm -hmm. i feel like film always seemed a little scarier um and it could be like an old date, a dated version of, of you know, because I first came on on the scene as an actor was during the Twilight films. Exactly. And that's so, another but, franchise. So yeah. the Twilight films intimidated. Well, you were also younger as well. Yeah. Did those well, those intimidated you more than walking onto the Walking Dead set? Yeah, they intimidated me because I know that there was like a big uh, fandom there. Right. Yeah. So and I know I had talked I had talked to Lynn and, and that was a big kind of like fear that she had had was was the fandom of it you know like she you know her job as as an actor it's like it's sound she's an incredible actress you know her choices are awesome and she knows how to do her work but then there's another aspect to that work where you got fans that like love these characters and if you you know oh, yeah. and so i think that probably took her took her by storm from what the conversations we had and but it's also me, scary had... because like you know we talked about this with lynn as well you have a lot of fans who are really into it that can't distinguish the character from the actor and that's where it yeah. gets a little scary as I, well i actually enjoyed it so I, I feel like i was prepared because of twilight like you know i had care people that would would hated my character because you know i was i was a vampire yeah. or i was a, I, I a was werewolf. not a vampire i was a werewolf yeah and so I had posted a thing where um, on my Instagram account where it's the scene where um, you know I'm basically arguing with with Daryl and Lynn has to you know um, Leah she's got to like tell me to stop you know like stop arguing with them and uh, and I put on there I only listen to chicks not dicks like D-I-X, you know, <laughs> yeah. I had some fans get mad. Like, you're, why are you so bad? You're so mean to Daryl. You know, they took it really serious. Yeah, and, they did. Uh, I loved it. I, pl- I played it. I played it as Carver, you know, like just, just kind of an asshole play with it. So no, I, I enjoy it. I, I actually, it's really fun going into something where there's passionate fans. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. And the walking dad definitely has his passionate fans. The twilight saga. Oh my God. I know yeah. time has passed, but that, that was huge as well. Uh, did you find the the crew, the cast, when you came onto The Walking Dead, very welcoming? Yeah, actually, it was really um, from every single department. I mean, it felt like a family because people had been there for so long, and just hearing stories and um, you know, I felt I felt really welcomed in a way that I actually I hadn't normally. When you film a film, it's it's the first time. You know, everyone's kind of being assembled. Yeah. Um, same with like if it's TV, you know departments kind of switch around a lot but this it felt like really loyal people were there and uh and really engaged man so I, I think i felt like i was right at home it's the first time i ever i had ever felt that way and uh it's kind of it's kind of a bummer to leave too when i left i'm like oh man i miss i miss georgia just the vibe there the people um we yeah. all hear about the brutal conditions the summer conditions in georgia and in yeah. the walking dead uh and of course they had you and the reapers pretty dressed up i mean they they didn't put you guys in tank tops and flip-flops you know what i'm saying uh (laughs) so uh was this in all the roles that you have played one of the most physically challenging maybe uh it took a lot out of you yeah um 
I, I remember that. So there was a day we're filming um, right before my death scene. We're in this courtyard and we were filming um, Elijah's um, view on the tower, the sniper tower. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just like a, a big wide. They hadn't come in yet to get like coverage, you know, all of our, our and there was a lot of coverage to get too. There was like all the actors there. Right. Um, and so they were shooting that. And it was like one of the hottest days in, in, uh, in summer. And it was a Georgia summer and I had all this gear on and I was drinking water, but I didn't, I didn't realize that I was sweating it all out. So I wasn't actually really hydrating. It was yeah. coming out real quick. And, um, and I remember, uh, um, um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he was like talking about how he was talking to one of the crew, you know, he was talking to one of the crew members and he was like, oh yeah, filming in, in uh, Georgia summer is like filming in, in someone's mouth. And, uh, and he was like, and then, and, uh, uh, Jeffrey Dean, he like interrupted him. He's like, actually, it's like filming in, in someone's anus. <laughs> and, uh, it was like the hottest day we're filming. And then, uh, they finally start coming down after it was like six days or six hours filming. And they come down and start filming and man i fucking i start i start getting really lethargic mm -hmm. i start talking slower and i looked at jeffrey and he's looking at me he's like you good i'm all yeah and the next thing i know i have one of the, the um a nurse the onset nurse and she's like okay so here's what we need to do we need to start stripping everything down and we need you to drink this and she gave me this like electrolyte yeah. drink and i was like, oh, okay so i'm kind of just listening to directions and Fuck, next thing I know, I'm like being like I got two P, a PA over here and over here, and they're like walking me yeah. to a video village. It's all like really dark, and they're on, they're taking off all my clothes. I'm literally just in my underwear, and they have ice packs, and they're putting it all over the place. And man, I like vomited. I didn't know what the hell was going on. They were like, it's all right, you know. It's, it's like it's, a heat it's, stroke, yeah. That's, like, yeah. that's some serious stuff. L let's talk about your death scene. Um, yeah. When you got the script and you saw how. Carver's time was going to come to an end. Uh, what, what were your initial thoughts? Because a lot of people, like, like I said, I've spoken to a lot of people who've been on the show, and when they find out they're going to die, they go to the director, at least, you know, make my death seem good, you know? Uh, Tom Payne, who played Jesus, said that to Michael Satrazimus, you know? Give me a good death. Uh, so when you read how Carver was going to go out, do you think it was gave the character justice or he went out less than what you would have liked? I was walking uh, my dog one day and saw um, Lauren plays Maggie. Maggie. Yeah. And, uh, and we were talking and she's like, oh yeah. And I thought I'm going to play Carver and she's like, oh, no way. And at, at that point I had, I hadn't, uh, I had just started watching the show. And I was like, holy fuck. When I saw her at performance, I was blown away by her as an actress. I'm like, oh, yeah. man, she's incredible. And so I was telling her about, about that. That's like, there's no false beat with her performance. She's like, oh, thank you. You know, and we were talking. But I remember thinking like, at, at that point, I was told that um, um, Elijah was going to kill me. Um, uh, is, that, is that his character? I forget the name. Yeah, the Elijah, actor. because okay. uh, Carver is the one that kills Elijah's family, his sister, right. and so on. So I, I was told that the, initially it was going to be him. He was going to get just, just you know, it was just like, a, just straightforward. I killed the sister, he's going to kill me. Type of revenge, you know? Yeah. I thought, oh, that's not that. That's, that wasn't that fun to me. I was like, all right, cool. But when I, when I saw her perform, and then when I met her, I'm like, fuck, I would love for her to off me. You know, like that'd be a badass death, you know? And um, man, then I got the, I got the script and I read it and I saw that she does it. I was like, ah, <laughs> uh, it felt, it felt cool because it was unexpected the way they did it as well. Um, and I liked the turn too, that like in, in her doing that, you know, she became pretty evil actually. You know, exactly. Kind of and I think I spoke about this with Lynn, this Yesterday's episode, the two predominant characters were Leah and Maggie. Uh, Maggie, in the end, I mean, we knew she has been on, a, since you binge watched the show, you know that she has been on a dark path ever since Glenn got killed. And yeah. what happened in yesterday's episode, I mean, totally took her to the dark side. Uh, mm -hmm. 
not i mean killing you yeah we saw that for elijah it was sort of justified but the way she went after the other three and just shot them in the back yeah. uh what are your thoughts on that having binge watched all the seasons and seeing her character progression I, I thought it was really good it takes her character to a whole new level yeah uh, i loved it i loved it i loved also how how it played with um the relationship with daryl as well yeah. they did that really cool reveal of like the time lapse where mm -hmm. all of a sudden she's on you know the wall i don't know if it was meridian where she was at but then you see you know daryl take the mask off and yeah it looks like they're on opposite sides of things like it that was, was six great. months later and he's part of the yeah. commonwealth and that's where the end the episode i got to see uh amc gave me next week's episode it's available now for people on amc plus and they're going full blown into the commonwealth and we'll see what that brings the reapers were a fascinating group and if i'm correct i don't think they were a part of the comics i think that was something that was just added for the television show uh so i gotta ask you because again you're in a unique position having binge watched all the seasons pretty recently, do you think the show needed another group like the Reapers or do you think that was kind of overplayed already? Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I was what, um, there was, um, some of the, some of the crew on the set were really excited about, uh, the Reapers. Yeah. And they were, and they were showing a lot of, they were just saying like, man, it's about time we have paramilitary, you know crew here that like you know that just really kicks ass you know um so yeah i, I, don't, I don't know i feel like there have always been different different groups you know but for me for my money i mean the best group were the uh the whisper the whisperers oh you know? god yeah they were scary. Whisper wars like ah they're so freaking cool and that's that was the thing is like by the time we started filming the reaper stuff i had gotten to the whisper wars and I was like, oh man, we're like, we're, we're not nearly as cool as they are. I was a little, you know, I was seeing the different groups. I was like, oh, we're better. We're better. You know, I was like really confident what we were going to be doing. And then once we got there, like Alpha and, you know, Omega, I was like, ah, oh, damn, they're really good. Now, um, Carver never really, uh, even after Pope was killed, he never was one after power. You, it seemed like your character never wanted to be in charge of the reapers mm -hmm. uh in your mind how, how did you come to terms with that like he was everybody was totally cool with once pope died letting leah take over yeah i i think her position as like a female in in power um i, I kept i kept thinking that in like times of darkness like that that there's something to be said about nurturing yeah. you know like it doesn't have to be there's certain and I, I feel like especially if you're if you're military the way we were is that there has to be a certain amount of discipline um you know even though obviously we're, we're like murdering all kinds of people but within that there's like an ethos that's like we have a certain belief that that keeps us strong as a strong unit mm -hmm. um, but i felt i kept thinking it was more like this the divine feminine that we were really like honoring of that of that position of that ability of power because we you know we're talking about like god right yeah like man what 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 more powerful thing than being able to to give life you know as, as, as a woman absolutely so, and everybody it was like no question once pope was killed the next natural person to lead was leah let's talk mm -hmm. about your your career you you were in the majority of the twilight movies as part of the well werewolf clan you were also in uh, Suicide uh, Squad as well. So you've been on some pretty big budget projects. Uh, do you credit Twilight with really springboarding your career? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, and it wasn't just, like the role was so small uh, in those films, but there was so much fandom around it all mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, it got me my whole representation, you know, my acting agency, the manager, and just everything. And it allowed me to move to LA and and just really go at go hard for different roles, you know, audition for things. Because up until that point, I was living in Arizona. Yeah. And, um, and I didn't I didn't know if it was ever going to happen, you know, as an actor. So 
having that not and it wasn't just one movie it was like an automatic three films yeah that i was contracted for that that cool man i'll just do oh, one wait, so and, you you did not go in for the first movie and thought that was it you knew you were going to do three of them yeah yeah, nice. yeah i already knew yeah so i had like i do the first one and then have enough time to audition or even just make the rounds and meet different casting directors and things like that and then film the next one so yeah it definitely gave me um it was mostly confidence man i think really as, as an actor it's a confidence game it's not i think everyone has a unique voice there's something we all want to communicate is why we're actors mm -hmm. but really you know really trusting yourself um that's where really cool performances i think come out and you know did you guys become really close on the twilight set oh we definitely did yeah they were um it was like a fraternity man you know you kind of like went to school together all these years and, and uh promotional tours and interviews together and then once you're kind of out of there you're always going to remember that i actually saw christian serratos on set but i didn't get a chance to to say hi to her because she was you know we we're kind of like it was passing yeah um i thought damn it was kind of cool to see her you know see her and so, yeah. twilight springboard it's so many careers Robert Pattinson, I mean, he's coming out as the Batman here yeah. in like a week and a half. Yeah. And there's a lot of anticipation for that. It springboarded so many uh, careers and uh, it was it was a, it was a great franchise and, and it did a lot of, of good. And then uh, then you got another role in uh, the Suicide Squad. What was that like? Uh, it was cool. Yeah, we filmed film with the. Uh, I mean, that was kind of, it was a small role. Mm -hmm. The role eventually got cut out. There were so many different yeah. you know, stories within that. It was like an A story, a B story, a C story. I was probably like the F story that when it got to the edit, they're like, eh, let's just cut this out. You know, so it didn't, it didn't my, my stuff in it, was, which was heavily with uh, Scott Eastwood. Yeah. Our stuff got like cut out. Uh, a lot of the Joker stuff got cut out. It was like the film just got edited in such a different way mm -hmm. than what the script initially was and that's but, uh, that's something that's like completely out of your hands once you're done yeah. your job is done and it goes into post-production there's yeah. nothing you can do about it you know yeah. it's just the way it works uh moving forward in your career uh i mean is there a genre whether it's film or television that you'd like to do more of um yeah actually the uh i'm writing something right now um and it's it's more in um because you know just my background with my family and stuff it was it was a lot more um like urban hip-hop like crime thriller you know and it's just in that world I, I like to really and i got so many friends that are still in it like actively you know they're like active gang members and still selling you know yeah products you know still selling things and so there's there's a certain um but they're really strong characters they're really interesting the way they talk and the way they communicate their world views so i'm working on something like writing for for these type of you know for those type of people and um you know there's a side of me that like which for carver you know i actually just have to access you know my my day-to-day -day, i'm you know i'm a dad I'm a husband you know what i mean so i play nice but there's definitely a lot of, a lot of darkness from oh, yeah. you know, the things i grew up seeing so it's really refreshing to be able to play a character like Carver. I can just be fucking full on, you know what I mean? And just let it all out. It's like therapeutic yeah. right there on yeah. the screen. You have done uh, writing and producing and shorts. Down yeah. the line, is that something you want to explore further? Maybe yep. into feature films, like maybe even develop your own television series and do all your writing and producing? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's where... That's where when I when I'm on set, I'm, I'm looking in those ways, too, while I'm acting. I'm also looking at kind of the tone, how they're capturing the tone of the show. Uh, you know, I look at the acting like um, the camaraderie, you yeah. know, because I'm also thinking for myself, like if I'm directing, how, how can I bring everyone together so it all connects and they're all communicating in the same the same way? You know, so I'm very, very uh, conscious of that. That's what was really beautiful about The Walking Dead is that, you know, sometimes you're trying to find the the tone and the voice of the, of the character and mm -hmm. you know and you when you get on like a movie for the first time or a tv show that they're just filming a pilot everyone's a little hot they're a little under or a little high and coming in it was like everyone knew their you know the tone the voice was spot on and i actually felt like i had the the greatest advantage was working with norm so much of the time mm -hmm. um 
because he's just so fucking grounded that I'm like, oh, I just match that. Whatever he's doing, you know, I can't get too high or too low. It's just kind of stay within there. And I know it's going to it's going to look great, you know, so. That is yeah, so like, cool. And you mentioned this earlier. I mean, Tales of the Walking Dead is coming out. Uh, there's a lot that we don't know about the Reapers. A lot. And it's very possible uh lynn we don't know what's going she's still alive we don't know what's what's going to happen with leah are we going to see her again before this season wraps are we not we just don't know your character is dead but that doesn't mean anything tales is going to explore a lot of the characters that we have seen over the last 11 plus years and give us more of a background story so i'm assuming if you got the call and say, hey, we're doing an episode going deep into the Reapers and Carver and Leah. Are you on board? You'd be all over that, right? Oh, for sure. And by the way, when they were, I was supposed to get hit in the head with the um, that s- s- or scythe. I don't know what whatever that was. A little. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Blade. It was like a like a homemade scythe, and uh, it was wicked. Yeah. <laughs> they that got hit in the chest. You know, so it's like you can argue that maybe I had a Bible or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> wake up again. You know, it, yeah, so Maggie, ways, Maggie did not spare anybody. She went totally ruthless. Alex, I want to thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your experiences with us on The Walking Dead and your career. Any final thoughts you want to share before we go? No, man, I'm just happy to be on board of this, on board with this journey and the, and the fans. I'm glad that you reached out to me just to kind of further. Uh, Absolutely. You are forever a part of the Walking Dead lore and family now. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, brother. Well, much success and good luck with everything else you do. And I hope to be on here again with for Carver's Revenge. Or- Absolutely. <laughs> That would be the uh, Tales of the Walking Dead title episode. You know, Carver's Revenge. Guys, our audience, I want to thank you for tuning in. A big thank you again to Alex Moraz. And uh, may Carver, for the meantime, rest in peace. Uh, Yes. Guys, stay safe. On behalf of Alex and myself, till next time, stay walking. Good night, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.